daughter at school and take her to work. All the way home? Yeah. Why? Because my wife's tutoring. And she doesn't, she doesn't have a car? Nah, she doesn't have a car yet, Pete. Have your boy bring her. I could do that. That's right. But I want to go home and paint that dash, Pete. Okay, see you later, dude. I'm going to close that all Shut up. that. I will. Just leave that open like it is. You like it like that? Just leave it like that so I can see the office for right now. Gotcha. I'll see you later, Norm. All right, Pete. If you got any tools in there, you need to bring them over here. Okay, yeah. Pete's Hobby Shop. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Okay, welcome back to Pete's Hobby Shop because what we're doing over here is we are actually making a center console work in our 66 Chevelle. Now, um, I was contemplating and wondering what the fuck's going on and how am I going to do this because I got several different ways. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and fiberglass this all together and uh, mold it together and that's basically what I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So what we got here, we got a piece of poster board. It's just a flimsy piece of shit fucking board. And what I'm going to do with that is I am actually going to make a pattern where it will slide down in each side here. And if you look real close right here, you're going to see that there's a clip sticking out on each side of this piece of our center console, this removable piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a piece of uh, board here. I'm going to take this... Uh, poster board motherfucker this fucking hobby shop shit's uh fucking really getting to me over here and making me lose concentration how's it going norm all right over here in the hobby shop over here in the hobby shop uh, is that a joke yes it's a joke i hope so please. it's a joke dude. okay let's get that road runner going dude. i'm trying see you later all right take it easy i'll see you tomorrow all right Okay, so we're going to take the piece of poster board and we're going to cut that out where it's going to slide down in there and it's basically going to notch over this, but it's actually going to line up with this line right here. And the reason that is is because this is actually a removable piece and we got to keep this to where it removes out of here due to the fact that our shifter is located down underneath this hole and you're going to see that uh, when we get to that point. So I'm going to take this poster board, I'll make a pattern out of that right there. Once I do that, I'm either going to use this plastic that you see right here, this clear flexible plastic, or I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, eighth inch foam board. So we'll go ahead and take our piece and we're going to slide it down in there. Now one thing we forgot to do is to uh, perforate a hole for our notches. Remember those little clips I was telling you about that are right here? So what I'll do is I'll slide it down in there and then I'm going to line it up just like so. And I see that it's just a little bit too big on each side right here. So now I'll go ahead and trim those down to make it fit even better. Once again, this is just our pattern. We're not going to be using this. And then I'm going to slide it down in there. Now I see that it slides very, very nicely. And now I'll go ahead and take my thumb while I'm pressing on the piece of paper where the notch has to be for this to fit. If you look real close right here, you can see the indention that I made into the paper. So I will now proceed to go ahead and cut out a notch, all right, just like so. What we're going to do is use those as a support situation for it to slide in there. If you look right here, you can see here's one of our clips right here, and there's another one over here on this side. So what we'll do is we'll take our uh, paper uh, pattern, we'll go ahead and test fit it on here being very careful and I see that this has to be bigger on this side so we actually cut that out just a little too small um, 
what we'll do is we will fucking try to fix it using the piece of paper that we took off. And then I'll take a small piece of tape just like this and I will tape that back on there. And that's why you want to make a pattern first. Do you see the situation we got? All right. If that would have been our, our final piece that we were cutting out, we would have had to start over. We'd had to fuck around and all this other shit. So that's why I take poster board and I make patterns in case of situations like this when you fall into the category of, well, I cut too much off. So we're going to tape that on there, and then now we'll go ahead and test fit it again. And I see that now it's just a little too big, and I think what happened, we took it off the wrong side. So we'll go ahead and cut this side off. Being pretty precise on it now, we want to start getting to where we're getting, uh, you know, a precise cut on it. And I also noticed that it's a little bit long, so we're going to cut some off. We really don't need all that excess there. And now it's starting to fit better. Let me go ahead and trim this one off as well. And it's basically what you're looking at here. You're just messing around. You're just, you know, fitting stuff together and, and basically playing paper mache boy while you're doing this. Um, just a little kitty game. That like if you were in fucking kindergarten. That's basically all it is. And then once we got to fit on where we want it, what we're going to do now is we are going to go ahead and tape it so we can go ahead and finish out our design. And what the tape will do, that will give us the angle of where it's going to be on the bottom. So when we make our permanent piece, we'll know exactly how big it should be. And now basically you can see where we're going with this. Um, we're going to have this right here, but you know, I was saying that I wanted to basically lean it out just a little bit, just like so. So when you look at it, it has a lean to it. And I will show you how to cover these up. Don't worry about that. Uh, we will take care of that problem. But right now what we're trying to do, we're trying to get this so it will be a nice piece that, uh, yeah, we can fiberglass up. So I'm going to bend it over like this. That's going to crease my tape because we made it just a little too big. I'm going to take my pen just like so. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the edge of it, as you can see, and I am painting it black. Now what that's going to do for me is when I pull the tape off, it's going to have a nice straight edge. And that's going to tell me where the bottom of our panel is going to be. But we're not done there because this is kind of a rounded situation and we want to make it where it's round. What we want to do is we want to find the contour of the back right here, the back of the center console, and we kind of want to make the same contour here. So we're going to lean it down just like this. Do you see how I laid that on top of there? And then I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to go ahead and press that. Uh, yes, my hands are a little bit dirty, so what will happen is it will leave an imprint in there to where I can uh, see the imprint to cut it out. And then we're going to pull it off and if you look right here you can see there's one imprint, there's another imprint and then right here is our straight line that we need to uh, follow when we make our pattern. And then to make sure that that's exactly the same what I'm going to do is I am going to fold it in half just like you see here. That, what that's going to do, that's going to help me find my center mark and I'm going to line it up and then when I fold it in half just like so what's going to happen to make sure that everything's square I'm going to take my scissors just like this as you're watching me and now watch what happens when I take that apart now both sides are exactly the same.
so now remember the mark I was telling you about remember that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut that tape just like so and I'm gonna stay right on the outside edge of the tape itself because that's the bottom of our panel that we want and then to strengthen that up and you know what I'm gonna go ahead and leave a gap right there uh, not a noticeable gap but a smaller gap uh, that uh, we'll be able to go ahead and remove everything that we need in case this is going to be covered with material. So we're going to go ahead and just take a little bit more off. So what I've just created here is an equal side on each one. You can see that. And I've also created, we don't care about these right here due to the fact that these are hidden and all we got are these clips that are going to help us hold it in there. And then we also created a nice square edge on the bottom of our pattern. We're going to go ahead and test fit it in there one more time just to see what it looks like and then we'll go ahead and make the permanent piece that we're going to use inside the center console itself. And it looks like that's going to work out very very nicely just like we want. What I'll do now is I'll transfer my pattern that I made out of my poster board onto a piece of foam board which you see right here. I'll go ahead and cut that out, get it precisely fit in there. We'll go ahead and glue that in there where it'll stay and then from there we're going to go ahead and brace it up, do some bracing. I'm going to show you how to do that and then once we do that then we're going to start fiberglassing. Okay, what you're looking at here, this is our uh, permanent piece that we made out of our template. Where's our template at? Um, very drastic, very hardcore situation going on over here. This is the template we made right here and then this is our pattern, this is our permanent piece. And then what I did is I went ahead and stuck it in the holes and once I stuck it in the holes I went ahead and removed our panel right here because this pops out very carefully and easily uh, to test fit that to make sure that everything works and you can see that comes right out just like that. Alright and then it will slide right back in very carefully um, as we put it in and then it'll snap back in place just like so. So that's what we're going to do. Now the way that we're going to mount this we're going to go ahead and use a hot glue gun. Now you can purchase one of these guns at your local hobby shop or possibly a hardware store. This little gun right here cost me a whole four dollars and fifty five cents and then I bought a bag of uh, glue sticks that you see right here um, for two dollars so I got about six or eight dollars involved in this and what we're going to do is we're going to glue that to the back of this without gluing our panel on. Remember this is our removable panel and then of course this is where the panel that we made goes on so we're going to go ahead and remove that out of there and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get some glue right here in this area and then of course over here and then on the bottom of this, I'm going to go ahead and put some glue right here. Just like that. And before this dries, we want to get this on there. Because we want this to glue together. And then we'll hold it in place just for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and add some more glue into our gun. And then I'm also going to go ahead and glue it right here. Put some more glue on that. And then I'll also get over here as well. Just like so. Uh, this is just a temporary fix right here because once we get into the fiberglass part of it, what's going to happen is um, we don't really give a shit about the glue. So that's just to hold it in place. Now, I was telling you about an angle. I want to set this at a, per, uh, 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 a certain angle. So, before I go any further, what I got to do is I got to brace that up so it will uh, stay in place. So, when I do what I need to do, that I'm going to show you, um, this isn't going to flex or move. And the way that I'm going to do that, I am going to take a piece of our scrap um, styrofoam here because we really got a lot of fucking time in this situation and you know time is fucking worth something 
You know what I'm saying? Time is an essence here. And it's really getting to be a pain in the fuck off ass. But uh, this is how you do it. I mean, you got to fucking get in there and you got to do it. So what I'm going to do is I got me a, a strip of foam. And I'm going to bend an edge right there just like that. You can see how I just did that. And then I'm going to kind of look at it like this. And I'm going to see where I want that to be angled at. And I'm going to go about right there. So I'm going to mark this. Let's get our marker out. Because now what we're doing is we're just making some legs here. So we want it about right there. And then we'll go ahead and mark that where we want it. And then I'm going to go ahead and bend this piece in just like that. Alright, I'm going to cut this off. So now what I got, I got two little tabs, one on each side. And I know this is turning out to be a long video set, uh, but bear with me. I think everything that I'm showing you here is going to be well worth the situation of you watching uh, type situation. Now what we got here, we're not looking too good. The reason I say that is because one's a little bit shorter than the other. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to bend that. I'm going to compensate for that just like this because um, we really got to have them exactly almost identically the same. Now we're looking good. So I'm going to take my hot glue once again just like this. I'm going to go ahead and put some glue right here and then on this side is going to go right here. Once that is performed we're going to go ahead and uh, stick this right here like this and then we're going to lean this down like that and then we're just going to kind of hold it like this let it glue itself together just for a second. Once again this is just a temporary situation and then if we're lucky it will all stay together. And then we'll repeat our process over here by doing our glue trick. Um, this is actually a very good trick to use as far as tricks go. And what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the glue, glue tab, glue gun uh, fucking trick. We'll go ahead and put that right there. And we're going to glue this right here. Now that that's done and we're ready to go ahead and cover everything, what we got here, what we have here, uh, let me get this out of the way. We don't need that right this minute. I'm going to go ahead and unplug that too. Uh, no sense wasting fucking electricity. But uh, what I got here, I got a special material, and this is called speaker cover material. Um, very popular material for a lot of stuff. But this is what I use. Uh, other people use other stuff, you know. Um, I don't know what they use, but this is what I use. And what I'm going to do, I also have my spray adhesive right here. Now the reason I like to use speaker material is because it's very stretchy and, and durable. All right. And when you use the stretchy stuff like this, when you go to stretch that over there, what's going to happen, it's going to be a real super tight fit and, and it's going to mold like you want it to be. Now that we got our material cut and ready, um, we're going to go ahead and spray. We're going to go ahead, and you can see that's nice and sturdy there. We're going to go ahead and take our spray adhesive, just like that right there. Do you see what I'm doing? Okay. I'm going to take the spray adhesive, and I'm going to go ahead and spray where I want it to go. And don't worry about getting glue anywhere because by the time we get done with this, it's going to be all fucked up anyway. And, uh, yeah, you get the idea. Okay. Now we're going to let that sit for approximately two minutes or so. And then once again, I'm using speaker material. Speaker material is very, very handy and, and works very, very good for this type of a job. So we're going to go ahead and start right here. I'm going to go ahead and push that down, making sure that it's nice and uh, wrinkle free. And then I'm going to start right in the middle and I'm going to pull it until I don't see any type of a wrinkle at all. 
and I'm going to stretch it as hard as I can because the harder you stretch it, the better off you're going to be. And we're going to come back and uh, trim all this. Uh, I always make it a little bigger than it's supposed to be. You can see that now we have created a nice curve, a nice angle, and a nice design by using our material and stretching it over the piece that we created. And now you can see that's ready actually to put our fiberglass on and start fiberglassing. Once again, we're going to trim this right here. Okay, we're going to trim all this extra off. Now, I'm going to go ahead and repeat my process in these corners right here by adding some uh, material and stretching it out over all of this, and then that will mold the corners in just like we did back here. Okay. We have now molded everything in place so we can start fiberglassing. I'm going to go ahead and take a break and when we come back we're going to remove this piece. Let's see I need to do some trimming right here. Alright, we want to trim that down a little bit and then once we do that we're going to let all this glue dry. We're going to come back and we're going to start fiberglassing the front of our center console. That's not all we got to do to it, just to let you know. That's just the beginning, so we'll be back. school. Classes don't stop till you know everything.